Um, so I've been asked to speak for about 15 minutes or so, and I've been working overseas for about three decades, so that's about five minutes a decade, so I'm going to be early in the You know, it's, I'm, I'm taking a little, uh, little more of a personal approach to, to uh, my experiences overseas, and you know, seen a lot, learned a lot, certainly, and have made many of the same mistakes that we heard about today, and had some of the same experiences. But really, I've been very fortunate to work in a number of different countries, uh, primarily in Southeast Asia and across the Pacific Basin. Um, and I guess over the years, if there's, I've learned a number of things. But one of the first things is um, the three rules of international real estate that listen, listen, listen. Um, you know, we all come to the table with our own cultural filters. And one of the most important things as you stand or as you sit across the table from someone is making connection. How do we do that? How do you really understand what that person is saying? And it's, it's critical that you're able to communicate and gain trust. And from that trust is when you're going to be able to do the sorts of great things that we saw in the previous two presentations. It's, um, it's an interesting it's an interesting thing that we'll also need to listen to what not said. Listen between the lines. And oftentimes, so many things do get lost in translation as a result of that. If you're not hearing something that you expect to hear, you're missing it. And so you constantly have to really be back-checking yourself when you're in these situations. And also, just be flexible. I mean, there was a great shot of the curiosity with the the older gentleman of the bird. You know, we all do this, I think, because we are curious. And they're going to test you. They're going to test you. They're going to try to find out what type of person you really are. Do you, are you doing this just to come over here for the dough? Or are you really interested in doing something contributing to their country and their culture? They'll put a, they'll put a bowl of fried crickets in front of you. And what are you going to do? Are you going to push the bowl away? Are you going to eat it? What are you going to do? So all of that begins to feed into just understanding and understanding how to weave your way through the norms. And one of the most one of the experiences I had was in Fiji, where it's a tribal society still. Tribes are represented at, at the highest level of federal government. And the only way that you get anything done there is by meeting with the tribal chiefs and you drink kava. Kava is a mildly, I don't know, it's a funny juice. Okay. <laughs> it, it, it makes you feel good. Um, and you, and you, so you sit and you drink hop, and for hours this goes on. And you know, eventually you'll get to what you need to talk about. And in our case, we were uh, working for a client who wanted to develop a small boutique hotel on this island in Sabu Sabu. And by, by going through that kava ceremony, actually several kava ceremonies, um, we finally were able to come with a plan that was acceptable to the tribal chiefs of the area and incorporated, and they allowed us to incorporate actually some of the pearl farming operations that were just off the shore here and also integrate those pearl farming operations and represent them within the, within the hotel itself. <coughs> probably one of the strongest um, cultural experiences I had, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Hawaii a couple times here tonight. I know, I know it's not overseas technically, but um, culturally, it's so strong. It, it's, it's the same as working overseas, except everybody speaks English, kind of, and you get to drink the water. So <laughs> one of the experiences, though, when we had started out um, working on the Kia was at that part Howard, um, it's pretty typical to sit down with a Pakuna, or a group of people representing, that are Pakunas representing the, the populace, and um, those are the, they used to be the spiritual leaders and now they're the community leaders of, of Hawaiian folks. And um, find out what's important to them on this particular land. Uh, many of you might have seen the descendants. And that's a very accurate, actually it's a very accurate representation of, of what happens in Hawaii relative to land. And that was sort of a Howley picture and we were involved in the, the local Hawaiian picture. And, in this one case, we ended up with a uh, group of Pakunas, um, about 10 very large Hawaiian folks, and about a room the size of this screen, actually. 
And uh, I was with my client, Ed DeVita, and uh, we were there to understand what was important about this particular piece of land. And uh, Auntie Lay started talking about you know, her great-grandfather and her grandfather and how all the stories that they had and things that they did when they were growing up on this, this piece of land, which was beautiful. And then Aunt, and Auntie Lay started to cry. And her, neck, her niece, who was sitting next to her, started to talk about some of the stories and her memories of Auntie Lay on the property and their uncles and their aunts. The niece started to cry. And then the brother of the niece started talking about his experiences and he started to cry. And pretty soon we have a room full of Hawaiian folks crying. Ed and I are crying. I don't really know why I'm crying, but it was so powerful and so moving. And what really struck me very, very hard that day was that you are being entrusted. When you work in another culture, you're being entrusted with a great responsibility. They're coming to you for a reason. They're coming to you, like, like Renee was saying, about the, the expertise you may have in this, from, from your education or your experiences here in this country, whatever it may be. And that's a very large responsibility to take on. And when you really heartfelt feel that responsibility, I feel as a designer, that's when you can do some of the best work. And so we were, it was a, it was a very rewarding experience and, and probably one of, the, uh, one of the funnest projects I've had the opportunity to work on in my career. Um, the, uh, when, you, when you do have that understanding, then you can begin to translate that culture into community. And to me, that we try very hard in our practice to make sure that happens. Um, and it's not just, it's not, you have to make sure the design is relevant to not only the existing generations, but hopefully the future generations as well. And, you know, skipping across the surface of making sure that you're kind of abiding by feng shui principles if you're in China, everything's facing south, or if you're using um, local materials and, and artisans, I think you have to go deeper than that. And so we really strive to try to understand at a deeper level, at a deeper meaning, what is important about this place for the people that live there. And um, one of the, the projects that we worked on uh, was in, uh, in Korea, in Oak Valley, uh, for a, a new community. And in Korea, a lot of, a lot of Buddhist traditions, and one of the traditions when you worship or go to the Buddhist temple is you go through a ceremonial series of three gates, a symbolic pur purification, if you will, as you go to the inner sanctum to worship. And so we took that idea as inspiration for the entryway into this community. And we established a series of three gates as well. The first being um, the, the breather station as we came up to the community. Um, the second, after you go up the hill through a wonderful landscape of native pine and other vegetation was a, a bridge that we needed to span. And the third, because it was a very hilly site, we actually had a, a proposed a tunnel going through, a short tunnel going through a, a hill. And as you got to the end of that tunnel, that's when the community opened out in front of you. And that was the one you were received in the inner sanctum. So maybe a little esoteric, but when the story is told to the people that are living there, they get it. And it, and it means something to them. And, and so that place has a special meaning, a little deeper meaning than perhaps uh, otherwise may have been. 